Now remember now, right? These are the words of Jesus. Okay? The same, the same Jesus that said that he didn't come to um, do away with God's laws, but to fulfill them. So what he's telling us, I guess he's just expanding on. Right? So not only can you not sleep with somebody you shouldn't be sleeping with, right? You shouldn't even look at it. What happens if we look at something long enough? Take your eye out. No. We end up doing it, right? Yeah, yeah. If we think about something enough, we end up doing it. So that's what we're looking at here. Okay, so do we think that he actually means physically? Metaphorically. There's a couple different schools of thought in this. Yes, this does refer to not only us personally, but also as a group. If we find ourselves doing something that we should not do, we should change. If we find ourselves in a group that are doing things that we should not do, we should separate ourselves. We know before we act out whether something is good for us or bad for us. It's up to us when God points things out to make the changes that need to be made. So, you don't stare at something for too long. There's no women out there. I just look. <laughs> right? We don't think about something for too long. When God points things out to us, that need to change, we make the change. We remove things from our lives that don't fit and aren't meant for us. We already know. So before we move forward, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for these words. Help us to be honest with ourselves, Lord. It really does take honesty and some of these things that we'd still like to do, it's, it's hard for us to be honest with ourselves. To know that we have to stop doing these things. Where we go to church, we go to meetings, we look for support groups. And even in these settings, we're staring at things we shouldn't be staring at. Because it takes us away from what we really need to be dealing with. And that's honest. All day long we look at stuff. And for many of us we've lived without stuff for so long and we see stuff everywhere. And we want to take stuff. Help us, Father, to see the folly, the foolishness you supply. Help us, Lord, this morning as we look to your word, each one of us, to recognize what it means to us each individually. You will speak to us, Lord, through your Holy Spirit this morning, through your word this morning, Lord. Help us to own it. Help us, Father. Give us strength. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Um, nobody looks forward, right? First of all, it's change. I mean, you know, when we, we're seeking change. We want to be somebody else. We don't want to be... Come on, I mean, how long ago was it? Were you on the sidewalk? Were you behind bars? Were you in a detox shaking? Right? We know these things. We don't want to be there ever again. But it requires us 
to make real life changes. Jesus is reminding us that those changes need to be way up front. Okay? The thought, the thought is what leads to the action. So what do we do? What do we do when that thought pops into our head? We have to make our life-changing decisions. Think about, and I don't know if you can get this picture in your head, right? I know I play a lot of videos with songs of Jesus being taken through the streets and having to carry his cross and having that thorn, crown of thorns on his head and the blood dripping down and then the, the nails, the, the big nails, big spikes being drove through his wrists. Okay? He didn't want to have to deal with that either. And all we have to do is stop looking at someone with lust in our eyes. Jesus said, Lord, please, if it be your will, take this cup from me. And all we have to do is stop putting things in our pocket that don't belong to us. We are called to have the same attitude that Christ had, ready to do whatever it takes. God is calling us from that whole mess into a personal relationship with Him. And we can't, these really aren't <coughs> big deals, but they're so ingrained in us. so part of who we hopefully were, right? Not are. Who we were. Because you might think of these as being little, but they're not. I get really tired of people leaving here because somebody called them on the phone and said, come on, I want you in my bed. It gets old. We have to cut out all of the things that get in the way of us growing spiritually. First of all, I hope you realize that there's no separation between spiritual health and spiritual growth and recovery. Okay? There's no separation in the two. I don't, I'm not talking about religion. I'm not talking about certain beliefs. I'm saying right here, for me, and this is what works, and this is what I believe, and that's the reason why I stand here today and preach this word to you, that I believe that through Christ Jesus, right, we come into a relationship with God, and we are spiritually transformed into the man that God created us to be, and then we have to walk that path every day. Christ made it possible through first allowing us to put our old self behind us. Okay? And then being our advocate because we don't. We still fall short. And we're going to flounder along the way. He's our advocate. Right? Which means that when we sin, when we are mournful and sorrowful in our hearts and we ask for forgiveness, we are forgiven. But we also have the Holy Spirit that He promised us as a counselor, as a guide, to help us to point out these things so that when we start going, whoa, check that out. You think, right? The Holy Spirit says, you can't be about that anymore, man. It's not about that. It's about our relationship with God first. When God sees fit, He'll put the right woman in your life. When God sees fit, He'll make sure you have the things. And I have found that not only the things that I need, but I also have some of the things that I like, that I want. But it comes down to our spiritual health, our relationship with Him. All right. So we know we got to cut stuff out. It's obvious. It's obvious, first and foremost, that I have to still cut stuff out. You saw a cool video, right? Yesterday, of a guy on a on a on a late model uh, late model KTM riding on a motocross track. Dude weighed probably what I did 
what I knew maybe before, with no shirt on. Right? I mean, he was he was really on it, and in slow motion, it did not look pretty. <laughs> <laughs> So it really made me think about what I have to cut out. Your hair grows too long, what do you do? Cut it off. Cut it off, right? Figuring out everything else. We know what it's like that we have to remove things in order for us to maintain health. I don't want to say beauty, but <laughs> some of that too. How about old using buddies? Look, I mentioned last week that, you know, even in part of the amends process, we have to separate ourselves from a lot of people. And that by doing so, then when God sees fit, those that are meant to be in our life will come back. But there's going to be a good bit of people, really, that we need to stay away from. You know, unless maybe God works in them and they change their lives. But we know we have to stay away from some people. It comes back to, again, removing the stuff that gets in the way of our relationship with God. So here we are, Matthew 5, 27. And uh, you have heard the commandment that says you must not commit adultery. Now, does anybody in their minds need to be told that we shouldn't sleep with somebody else's? Wife? No, I think we all know that's wrong, right? But it doesn't say that, and hold on, let me read on here. It says, but if I say anyone who even looks at a woman, it doesn't say that if I look at somebody else's wife. It says I look, if I look at somebody, another, a woman, if I look at a woman with lust in my eyes, I've committed adultery. And I don't want to dig deep into that because like I say in this setting, I try to keep it as simple and plain as possible. But our relationship with God, I really think that when we put even something else above Him, it's like we're committing adultery. God needs to be first in our lives. So if anyone even looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Our heart needs to stay pure in our relationship <coughs> with God. We need to try our best to keep Pure. Our thoughts, right? Our heart and our mind, the things that we desire, whether they be people or something. Where is our heart's desire? We are married to God through Christ Jesus. Where is our heart's desire? Because if we desire something other than God. So if your eye, even your good eye, causes you to lust, gouge it out. Even your good eye, right? Yep. Gather it out and throw it away, for it is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. Gouge it out. I, I think the illustration here shows the importance of how important it is to remove the things that get in the way. Even thoughts that get in the way. Is it easy to make these life-changing decisions that we're going to stop doing something that we've done all our lives? No, it's not easy. It's so ingrained in us. You know, I had, I had a friend too, right? Uh, 
Sicilian guy. He was really something else. I mean, when we're all together as buddies, right, we're buddies. But as soon as a woman showed up, all he did was tear everybody else apart and trying to look good. You know what I'm saying? It's like everybody, hey, hey, you know, everybody's pounding and here she comes. Hey, you, you guys are idiots, man. You ain't got what I got. It's like, what's going on there? We're somebody else, man. And it's complete change of who we are. It's ingrained in us sometimes to be a certain person, to do a certain thing, to act a certain way. And it won't be easy to change. So I think that's the reason why we have such a graphic illustration of how important it is for us to make these changes. We've hung around with people all our lives. In some cases, they're family members. And we have to separate ourselves from them in order to continue to be move on the path that God laid out for us. They don't fit. And if your hand even your good hand causes you to sin. Cut it off and throw it away. Better that than to find yourself in hell. Even if your right hand, good hand, you ever hear the expression, he's like my right hand? Sometimes it's going to be a hard separation. But Jesus is using, again, this illustration to make a point that it's not easy sometimes for us to make these changes. You know, my, my best friend, when I left Philly, one of the reasons why I left Philly was to separate myself even from him. And probably about eight years later when I was at home, visited my mom, he drove by and stopped. And I still, still to this day, I mean, because we're best friends. But I needed that eight years to work on myself. And when God saw fit, Chris rode down the street just at the right time so that I can get back into that good right hand. I mean, he was my right hand. Really, I mean, we used to drive around in a car, right? Chris is an Italian guy, so he talks like this. So we'd be driving in a car, and he'd see something and go, oh, oh, look at that, look at that. He'd be banging on my shoulder, like over here. Like, I'm the <laughs> he was like my right hand. Sometimes we need to separate ourselves. God sees fit. Those relationships that were meant to be will be mended. Again, this could be people, places, or a thing, or many things. But if there is anything that causes us to sin or increases the temptation to sin, we need to separate ourselves from whatever or whoever. It's just, it has to happen. So we get to this. Swallow your pride. Because sometimes that is the largest obstacle. Whether we tell ourselves that we should be able to handle it, or whether we want those that we that, that we you know still want to hang around with, but we know we shouldn't, how they're going to think about us, or whether whatever that might be, we need to swallow our pride and. <laughs> If you see the way I wrote that, I don't know, I know it's kind of small. Don't let embarrassment stand in the way. Because you will feel embarrassed at times. You will be 
feel embarrassed at some times because now you can't do certain things and it seems like everybody else does. I think it's what's funny too is that we were we embarrassed for the way we were. Feel the pain? Talk about it. If you're a worried man, then you should be shouting about it. When we deal with the... Look at each other, right? I'm not going to tell you to do something weird, but you're all here in this chapel right now, right? We've all recognized that our lives are a mess and we need help. We've all then reached out for help and here we are. Every person in this room that I, I believe wholeheartedly that each person in this room, including myself, is here right now at this time for a reason. So that you have each other. Now some of the lessons you're going to learn are by somebody else's mistakes, sadly enough. But we have each other. We have to open our mouths. This subject that I'm talking about, I mean, if we focus at least on the women part of it, is something that you guys need to be talking about. Honestly. With yourselves. Before each other. Opening your mouth and discussing it. Because it's such a pull that it takes more people out of here than relapse. Women take more men out of here than putting a substance in your body. Hear me. You need to be talking about it openly and honestly. Now, I know you're not going to talk about it in a woman, when you're, I mean, in a, in a meeting with women around. But this is a, this is a, you guys are here together. You need to be honest. Again, pride goes before the fall. Pride goes before destruction and haughtiness before the fall, right? Haughtiness, like, I can do this. Like my buddy when the girl showed up. I'm this, I'm that. I'm not saying beat up on yourself for where you put yourself in life. But let's be honest about it. We need help. We need to be honest. The words that come out of our mouths need to be honest. Time to eat all your words, swallow your pride, open your eyes. High time we made a stand to eat all our words. Shake up the views of the common man. Shape up, right? Let's shake up. Let's, let's stop thinking about what everybody else is doing. They're still doing it. Be honest with ourselves. Swallow our pride. I mean, how many... How many people in this room, without showing your hands, just think about, just even think that having a woman in your life is a, a symbol of stature? Or, you know, I, I need to show everybody that I can have a woman so that they might think I'm better than I am, or something. Right? It's true! You gotta be honest with yourselves and have each other. Open your mouths, talk about it. If anyone respects and fears God, he will hate evil. For wisdom hates pride, arrogance, corruption, and deceit of every kind. Wisdom hates these things. Where do we get our wisdom from? We don't get it from out there because everybody else is doing it. We get our wisdom from God. 
God speaks to you. You know before you act out. When you start staring at somebody you shouldn't stare at, you already know you can't be about that anymore. When you look at something and you say, You look at it long enough, you know, next thing you know you're like this. <laughs> you already know. The minute you set eyes on it. Fix your thoughts on what is true and good and right. Think about things that are pure and lovely and dwell on the fine good things in others. Think about all you can. Praise God for and be glad about. How about we start there? Ah, uh, she's looking good. Thank God I don't need her in my life right now. Oh. Wow, I could really, I'd really be nice to have. Thank God I don't need that right now. That God's supplying everything I need right here, right now. Thank God. Fix your thoughts on what is true and good and right and thank God. All right, so we got to cut stuff out. Pride, there's a list of them. Want, desires for anything other than God. Remove everything that causes us to sin. I can go through the list of each one of you as you sit here now know what it is you need to be dealing with. God has spoken. You know in your heart the things that need to be cut out. It's not your arm or your hand. It's not your eye. It's the things that cause you to sin. The thoughts that cause you to sin. The parts of you that are so ingrained, that have been part of your life for so long, and you're concerned about how you're going to change, God will give you the strength and the courage. But you have to rely on Him. You have to stop relying on this world and thinking about what other people think and feel about us. You already know the issues like false pride or ego, self-centeredness, and even self-reliance that you still give into. You have to cut it out. It's the only way you'll know peace in your life is to cut those things out. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, again, Lord, I thank you for your message. I thank you, Lord, for the presence of the Holy Spirit. You spoke to us. We heard from you. We received wisdom, knowledge of your will for our lives. Now give us the courage to own it. We're not just sitting in this chapel thinking about how good it sounds. We're making a decision to apply it to our lives, to do it every day. But we're not going to be able to unless we maintain our relationship with you. So help us, Father. Help us, Lord. We heard the words of your son, Christ Jesus. And it's made possible that we not only know them by reading them in our minds, but by living them, by having them in us. Through a relationship with you, through Christ Jesus, who died on a cross for our sins. Help us, Lord, to know this is real in our lives, each person here to accept Christ into our hearts and our personal Savior, to, to admit that we are sinners and there's nothing we can do to save ourselves but to accept yes. what you have given. We ask for forgiveness. We accept Christ into our hearts and our personal Savior. We repent of our sin. Lord, we know the things that we've done and we ask for forgiveness now. And I thank you, Lord, for meeting our needs this way, Father. I thank you, Lord, for lifting us up out of that old mess, Father. You put us on a, a, a solid rock, a firm foundation. 
as Christ died on the cross, we too have put to death our old self. We are made new, new creation, new creatures in Christ Jesus, Lord. Now we have a starting point. Tell us that you steady us as we go. You give us guidance. Give us direction through your word and through your Holy Spirit. And Lord, I pray this morning, Lord, as we look to your word, you may have spoken to us about things that we still do, convicting us of our sins, Lord. And I pray that if that be the case, Lord, that we're able to lay them at your feet. Take them from us, Lord. You're calling us to cut things out that get in the way of our relationship with you. Help us, Lord, this morning. Give us the courage from this day forward not to participate in whatever those behaviors or thoughts might be, but to focus and desire you above everything else. You're the creator of all things. And we worship you, the creator, not the creation. Thank you, Lord, for making that possible. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right, well, my wife's not here to do the benediction, so I will say this. This is our benediction. Go in peace. Thank you.